the older wide receivers, the 29, 30 year olds that just are mega producers. We're talking about Devontae Adams. We're talking about Cooper Cup, Tyreek Hill, uh, and Stefan Diggs. Where are those guys? Where, where do they belong in dynasty rankings? Tyreek Hill, I, I still think should be very high up there. Uh, probably ahead of Stefan Diggs right now. I know, I know we got the the rumors and he told everyone maybe for attention that he would retire uh, after this contract. I don't know if that's true, but at least we saw with Tua under Mike McDaniel, like Tyreek Hill is an absolute like world beater, a 31 and a half percent target share to Waddle's 22% and gains from Tua. So it's like not even one, a one B as some call them. It's literally just Tyreek Hill and an Island alone. And then Waddle relying on efficiency, which he's the kind of player like Debo Samuel who can get by. Cause he's a one of one talent when it comes to speed, but also uh, remember Tyreek Hill already led the league in yards per route run, but that increased to massive 3.4 yards per route run in those games from Tua as well. So certainly someone I want to keep betting on. Diggs is an interesting one given the latest OTA news, but we talk about sifting through news and just like spitting out what matters. I don't think Diggs like trade rumors or grievances on June 18th matter so much when it comes to the regular season. So he's still someone I'm still fine with buying on around the first second round turn. Correct me if I'm wrong, Theo. Um, but that's kind of where I have value him right now. Devontae Adams is the clear one to sell just because we don't know if we have Garoppolo. We don't know if Garoppolo matters whatsoever as well since Adams led the league in yards and touchdowns from 20 yards deep. Like Garoppolo's both attempts and completion rate 20 yards deep the last two years pales in comparison to Derek Carr's, who himself wasn't even a good thrower when it came to downfield shots. So like I do wonder about Adams' ceiling for the rest of his career, honestly, for as long as he stays in Las Vegas. So I would put Adams behind those two. Yeah, it's interesting because Tyreek Hill, like John brought up a, a lot of factors with Tyreek Hill, but the guy had 170 targets and only seven touchdown catches. We've seen this guy put up a 15 touch, uh, touchdown season recently, 12 touchdowns. I mean, the guy's a touchdown machine. So it's scary how high Tyreek Hill's upside is. And I think that the whole dynasty manager is kind of hating the fact that he might retire early is about the dumbest thing I've ever seen because we don't play this game in six-year windows. You're playing this game in like two-year windows or three-year windows. That's how you should approach your dynasty team. I would say that in terms of cost in, in dynasty leagues, in, in terms of drafting them and also in terms of trading for them, Tyreek Hill and Stefan Diggs cost more than Cooper Cup right now despite the fact that Cooper Cup is right there neck and neck with Hill and ahead of Diggs right now in ADP for redraft. I traded Terry McLaurin and, Ch and Chig Okonkwo to get Cooper Cup. My team was a contender, and now I think it's really, really a contender. Um, and I think that there's kind of a disconnect in terms of what these guys are worth in the redraft market versus what they're worth um, you know, to our dynasty team. So I agree with John. It's, it's Tyreek Hill, it's Diggs, it's Cup, and then it's like a tear break to Adams because I have the same reservations you do. Uh, Las Vegas could be an, an absolute mess this year. And I like Terry McLaurin for that trade in particular um, as much as anyone else. But the issue, remember, is that Terry McLaurin last year, we had Curtis Samuel lead him in targets for more than a month of games worth. Then we had Jahan Dotson over the last month lead McLaurin in targets as well. And so, like, there's just this abundance of targets to go around. And it's not necessarily going back to McLaurin, who has yet to finish as a top 20 receiver in points per game for his entire career. And so, yeah, of course, I get off that for, for a two year window for Cup, even. Yeah. And yeah. just in terms of points per game, like, McLaurin's a guy that we always love the talent. But at the end of the day, he's never cracked 15 points per game. Right. You've seen Cooper Cup uh, put up just astronomical numbers. You've seen him he put up 25 points per game. So now we're we're just measuring these things. So, um, to, like it's it is possible for you to go get elite assets right now without like you know paying up all of your future future draft picks. You can go get these guys with a you know a, a younger wide receiver two that might never crack wide receiver one status with a couple pieces on top. Yeah. Let you me say. Okay. You say McLaurin never averaged 15, but then remember, as we always talk about Cup, Cup in eight full games of Stafford last year led Justin Jefferson, averaged over 20 per game. Yes. That's how good yes. Cup was. What really is dynasty fantasy football? It's the value of players, right? We see mm -hmm. if we take the same player, we value them very differently in redraft than we do in dynasty. And all of those guys that we talked about, the Cooper Cups, Tyreek Hills, even Devontae Adams, Stefan Diggs, they go in the first round of our redraft leagues, but there's players that go after them that we value more in dynasty. So 
really when you when you when you juxtapose them with like T Higgins, Chris Olave, John, for example, what are you going to value more here? The the thirty year old produced now guys or someone that's flash in the NFL like T Higgins, like Chris Olave? Where should that group be in in you know the young versus the old in dynasty when you do rankings? I'm valuing for startups the younger individual i think it's genuinely i I know it's a cop out but it's a case-by-case basis honestly like there are teams where i've gone out and traded for keenan allen this offseason um best ball right now he's still one of the best values on the board because he's being undervalued for what he did last year and i'm not sure why i think just because as you mentioned like the 30 31 year old age right now uh keenan allen like last year he finished six games with Mike Williams, and in those six games, he averaged a team-high 28% target share. Like, all he does is lead that team in targets, and we have at least one more year from him from Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, only 23% of his dropbacks came with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams on the field last year. And in those 23% of dropbacks, he led the league in completion rate. So I think as long as they're healthy, the sky's the limit for this offense. And so I want that one-year window in this case for mm-hmm. Keenan Allen with Justin Herbert. Yeah, Keenan Allen though you don't have to pay the freight for it. He goes no. like ninth and tenth. Super cheap. Trade for him if yeah. you're like competing for right now. 